Rural Commander Richard Cokey patrols the highway with several police units and a large group of defence personnel. He says they've become spectators, facing villagers armed with a cache of bullets. A lot of uh, high-powered weapons been used and also in terms of funding support, there are leaders in the tribal community. They are the source of the financing side of uh, buying guns and uh, bullets. Welcome back to PNG Trends Burner. Who is arming these warlords? Today, we will examine a pressing issue that affects the safety and security of Papua New Guinea, the escalating armed conflicts in our Upper Highlands provinces. Alan Bird asked this pressing question, who is arming these warlords? There are people in this city, and in Lehi and what must be Motak and Goroka, people are sending money. People are buying bullets, guns. They are hiding here in this city. Man who says Salim Maniko and Stapiet is still out there, here in the city, and among us, and among us. So to stop the problem, we have to cut the head of the snake. The fights in uh, Wabunumanda are supported by people living in Port Mosby. These are the images that have been coming out of Enga province. The highlands are on fire in a wave of tribal fighting. Many videos are too confronting to show. Months later, and a large district in the province is still a battleground. Homes, schools and markets have all been destroyed and many people have been killed. Young teenagers are dying. Young man am dying. Very, very sad. Always you are powered gun here. Not compared to the little guns that the police and defence have. Here, we ask three additional questions for Papua New Guineans to ponder. Are the provincial governors of the two hotspot provinces Hila and Enga proactive in solving gun-related problems in their jurisdictions? Is Prime Minister James Marapi, who is from Hila province, making any significant difference in solving gun violence in his province? Seeing the rise in organized armed conflict in our upper highlands over the past decade should concern every Papua New Guinea. Ordinary villagers, with little to no income, are somehow able to afford high-powered firearms in a country where guns have been banned for 30 years. This raises many questions. An AR-15 on the black market costs at least 75,000 kina. An SLR? The same. A single bullet? Around 100 kina. Operating these weapons is no cheap affair. So, how are these poor villagers affording them? Our Upper Highlands provinces have budgets in excess of 600 million kina a year, with additional funds from PIP and national government contracts. That's billions of kina flowing into these regions annually. Could it be that public funds are being funneled to these wards? Are government contracts the hidden channels funding them? Where are these weapons coming from? The only entities allowed to bring in new weapons and ammunition are PNG police and defense forces. Can they account for every weapon and round of ammunition? Is there transparency in this process? When these warlords amass enough weapons, will they confine their operations to their provinces, or will they extend their reach? This build-up of military weapons is a growing national threat. It's not just the highlands at risk, 
This could spread to neighboring provinces and beyond where the hiring of gunmen is a thriving business. Every national leader should be deeply concerned. The people of PNG need assurance that the independent state of PNG will protect them from this threat. Right now, these tribal terrorists operate with impunity. Are they being aided by powerful individuals? Our provincial administrator and his team uh, in Mosby to talk to uh, tribal people in Port Mosby. Uh, basically, uh, after realizing that the fights in uh, Wabinamanda are supported by people living in Port Mosby. So in Enya and the uh, Upper Islands, trouble fight is, uh, uh, it's not new to us. Trouble fight was there, it's part of our culture, but in this time and era, trouble fight has evolved over time. Now we need a different approach to address this issue. Send a new PPC, for example, or if we send the police commissioner two times, three times to Enya, it will never solve the problem that we are facing now in Enya. But all my name, place man, all know a gun, all know a bullet, all Fight now, stop rambling about. But there are people in this city, and in Lehi and Potmosby, Montague and Goroka, people are sending money. People are buying bullets, guns. They are hiding here in this city. So to stop the problem, we have to cut the head of the snake. And we have to hunt them down here in the city to stop the problem up there. We can't go up there and stop it. I'm all trouble man. I'm trouble with bus. I do bus. You put a pine in the bus. How about you go find him? I'm all blessed man. But you mean by man who said, making transactions for year long, city, we're selling money go long, fund him all long, we'll fight again. If we don't do anything now, then we'll go fight again tomorrow. Man who says, selling money go and stop it, he's still out there, here in the city, and among us. We cannot allow these illegal armies to flourish unchecked. Papua New Guinea, and our neighbors, cannot afford to let this threat grow. Our existence as a democratic state is at risk. It's time for strong action, determination, and accountability. Join us in demanding answers and ensuring a safer future for our nation. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Tell our viewers what you think about the escalating gun violence in Hila, Enga, and Southern Highlands provinces. Are the local PMs doing enough? Are the provincial governors proactive in solving this problem? Is the Prime Minister, who is from Gila province, making any significant difference in solving gun violence? Thanks for being a central part of PNG Trends Burner. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video.